Hi, I'm Richard from the sales department here at uh, MLNS. Well, I've looked at the time and we've got a we've got a couple of hours until we close. So I thought I'd get on the radio, see if I can make a QSO or two using the wire antenna, or the NFED wire antenna that we've got up on the roof here. After we've made a, a contact or two, we'll come back tomorrow and show you the equipment that we've used and how to set up an NFED halfway. So let's see if we can make a contact. Golf 2, Mike Lima, G2, ML. Golf 2, Mike Lima, good afternoon. 5 and 9 here near Berlin. 5 and 9, operator Tina. Thank you very much, Tina. My name here is Richard, and you are also a 5 and 9 on your last over. Uh, here I am receiving you on the Yesu FTDX10 and also an end-fed half-wave antenna approximately 20 metres long. Back to you, Tina, from... Golf 2, Mike Lima. Thank you very much from G2ML. Thank you and good luck for your football team this evening. Ah, thank you, very kind. 73. Well, there you have it. We finally made a QSO. That uh, took quite a while. The bands were fairly quiet. Lots of signals, but they disappeared very quickly. So, um, and luckily, I saw that one pop up and uh, managed to get in straight away. Very good indeed. On the end, fed half wave antenna that we're going to discuss later on. Okay, so I'm going to pack up now and uh, we'll come back tomorrow and show you what all the components of the wire antenna look like and how to set it all up. So that was the, the QSO and I've moved the FTDX10 out of the way. Let me show you uh, the components that we used uh, to, make that, uh, to make that QSO. First of all, we've got the 49 to 1 Anun. Then we have the antenna wire. This is uh, Kevlar antenna wire. And we also use a small dog bone insulator at the far end of the wire. That's it. So why would you use an NFED half-wave antenna instead of a uh, dipole, for example? Well, uh, the NFED half-wave is multi-band with the uh, 49 to 1 Unun. If you used uh, 20 meters of wire, let's say, antenna wire, yeah, that would operate on 40 meters, 20, 15 and the 10 meter bands and quite well. And uh, with the internal tuner of the radio, Certainly the FTDX10 tuner will easily allow you to also operate on 17 metres and 12 metres and sometimes on 6 metres as well. So let's have a better look at the, the equipment. I know it seems very simple, but let's have a, a very quick overview of it. So let's start with the Anun. This is the uh, CG antennas 49 to 1. These have just come back into stock. These are very nice. I use one of these myself. On the top here, we've got the wing nut connection for your antenna and also a, either a hanging loop or a stress relieving loop for the antenna. On the base, there is a the connection for your coax. There's a the connection for a ground or a counterpoise. And also there's a, a breather there as well to equalize pressure. And also there's a, a drain hole for um, uh, any condensation that may may develop in there. We've also got the Kevlar antenna wire. Now this antenna wire is manufactured in the UK, very flexible. It has a Kevlar core and a uh, copper tinned braid, very easy to solder. As I say, manufactured in the UK and uh, extremely strong. These are very popular. Uh, especially for if you're building larger antennas. Of course, you can make different antennas with these as well. You don't have to just make end-fed half waves. You can make all sorts of wire antennas, but we can we can get to that in another video. If you'd like to see how uh, how easy it is to set this up, then have a look at my video from last year on the MLS YouTube channel, where it shows me uh, making and operating uh, an end-fed half wave in the field with the Zygu X6100 transceiver. All right, so how did I get about to, to start using an NFED antenna? Well, I was looking for a, a multi-band antenna 
that uh, wouldn't take up a you know that wouldn't be visible perhaps wouldn't take up a lot of room um, I didn't want to use a vertical because the area I live in where the garden is overlooked and everybody would be able to see it uh, so I thought about using a wire fairly low down running the length of the garden very I'm very lucky they've got a, a longish garden so initially I went with them um, let's move these out of the way initially I went with this one here this is the this is a 49 to 1 it's a uh, a low power version it's got the same connections on it connection on the top for the antenna uh, stress relieving loop or hanging loop uh, counter poise and also the connection for the um, for the coax so this is what I use very effectively for, for quite a while uh, but I did find that uh, my SWR was changing on some of the bands when I was using the data modes FT8 and then I realized that um, I was tuning I was tuning the the antenna with the radio and i didn't realize at the time this is going back a few years i didn't realize that uh, tuning the antenna doesn't change the um the mismatch on the antenna it just tells the radio that the antenna looks okay in reality the unun was heating up because it was always a mismatch at the antenna end uh, so that's what was changing my swr so i thought i'd go for a higher capacity um unun. and that's when i went for this one here this was this is the uh, CG antennas version, and I use uh, I did use twenty meters at first, but I realised that if I use forty meters of wire, I could also get on the eighty meter band, which is quite interesting in the evenings in the UK. So I use forty meters, and, uh, and that will tune quite happily with the internal tuner on my radio from eighty all the way up to ten meters, and even sometimes on six, depending on on the weather. Seems to me that. Uh, uh, the more it rains, the the better it will work on, uh, or or it may tune on six meters. Right. Okay. So if you're curious as to what's actually inside an unun, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this one first. This is the this is the lower powered version. I've taken the screws out already. Let's have a look. So inside we have we've got a toroid core with some windings, and we've got a, a small ceramic capacitor and also the connections from the the coax to the windings and the windings to the antenna connector at the top there not very exciting now let's have a look at what's in this one here there we go so this one we have stacked toroids so there are two toroids we have the the windings much uh, thicker uh, enameled copper wire and we also have a very large capacitor here so there you have it a very simple device very effective to get you on multiple bands if you'd like to know some more or like more information then please leave your comments in the chat down below or give us a call at the shop thanks very much for watching and we'll see you the next time